So if you need to see the star method or Lizzie's method or any other kind of method, you have come to the wrong place, my friend. This is going to be a guess and check type of situation, but I can do it in such a way that it goes by very quickly. Um, and here's how I do it. Step one, look for GCF. All right, problem number one, there is no GCF. Uh, so that means let's move on to binomial times a binomial. You look at that B squared and you're thinking B times B, am I right? You look at that seven, well that's a prime number. That can only be one times seven. Now the thing that you will hear me say over and over is outer plus inner equals middle. Okay, and uh, I'm talking about this is the inner, in fact I usually say inner plus outer equals middle. This is the inner, this is the outer. Now this problem is ridiculously easy, but inner I have 1B, outer I have 7B. The middle I'm trying to get is 8B. Well, um, I can control the signs. If both signs are positive, that would make 8B. So that means these are positive, and positive 1 times positive 7 is 7. So there we factored it. Okay, it's genius. So there's your answer to problem number one. Okay, take a look at problem number two. Um, another easy one. Pretty much any problem where the leading coefficient is one is going to be super easy by any method. Um, it gets a little trickier when the leading coefficient is like two or four or something like that. But let's look at problem number two. Is there a common factor? No. So we move on to our binomial times a binomial. n squared, that's n times n. 10. 10 is either going to factor as 2 times 5 or 1 times 10. Keeping an eye on the 11 that I have in the middle term, I'm thinking 1 times 10 is our best bet. Remember, inner plus outer equals middle. Okay, inner, I have 1n, or just n. Outer, okay, I have 10n. I'm trying to get a middle of negative 11. I can make negative 11 out of these two if I have negative 1 and negative 10. So there's my negative 1, there's my negative 10. Got to check one last thing. Does negative 1 times negative 10 make positive 10? Of course it does. Negative times negative is always a positive. So that's it. We did it. Okay, this is the answer for numero dos. Okay, all right. Another easy one. Okay, leading coefficient of 1. I'm looking forward to getting to the more difficult problems. Okay, but for now, here we go again. m squared can only be m times m. 90. Uh, this is either going to be 9 times 10, or it could be, um, let's see, 3 times 30 or it could be 2 times 45 okay but uh, yeah 9 times 10 is really looking pretty great okay and that's the first thing that pops into your head anyway so let's go with that um, remember inner plus outer equals middle inner outer Inner, I've got 9m. Outer, I've got 10m. I'm trying to get a middle of positive 1. I will get a positive 1 if I have a positive 10 and a negative 9. There's my negative 9, there's my positive 10. Only thing I gotta watch out for, am I getting the negative 90? Sure I am. Negative 9 times positive 10 is negative 90. 
That makes this a win. We win. All right, is it time for the more challenging problems yet? Okay, let's take a look at number four. All right, finally, a little bit of a challenge. Okay, first we look, is there a common factor? No. So that means, yeah, we go ahead to the binomial times the binomial. But we have to be a little more careful now that we have a leading coefficient uh, that is not one. So 2x squared, that's only going to factor as 2x and x. So that's new, not bad so far. Um, 7 is a prime number. So 7 can only factor as 1 times 7. So this should be pretty easy. Now it matters whether I put the 7 here and the 1 here, or whether I put the 1 here and the 7 here. Let's say if we did it this way. Remember, inner plus outer equals middle. Okay, inner, that's inner. This is outer. Inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 14x. I'm multiplying. Can I get 9x out of this if I pick the signs right? No. The best I could do would be 13 if I subtract it. So um, this is not working for me. So let's switch these. So uh, let's try putting the 7 here and the 1 here. OK. How does that change things? Now, inner, I have 7x. Outer, I have 2x. All right, I'm trying to get a middle of 9x. Well, I'm in luck. If these are both positive, that will give me a positive 9. That means these would both be positive. And positive times a positive is a positive 7. So that means this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Y'all probably don't even know that song because you're babies. I'm an old man. Okay, all right. Number four is done. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit of a challenge. You know, what? I'm going to copy this inner plus outer equals middle B's NAS so I can uh, don't have to write it over and over again. All right, I'll see you on the next problem. Okay, I love it when the leading coefficient is not one. All right, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, let's play. Um, 3x squared, that's prime, so that can only be 3x times x. Now 16, got some choices here, all right? 16 um, could be 4 times 4, or it could be uh, 2 times 8, or it could be 1 times 16. Now, when there's a number in front like this, a coefficient that is not 1, I can't just immediately look at these pairs and look for the 8. So some kids are going to go, oh, look, it's got to be this one, uh, because that's will give you 8. Yay. Um, but you know what? This is probably not the answer um, because of the 3. So don't be surprised if this is not the answer. Nevertheless, let's try it first. So let's start with trying 4 and 4, OK? But it's not the 4 and the 4 that will give me 8. It's the inner plus the outer that has to give me this middle. So I know what you're thinking. Mr. Burton, what in the world are you talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Inner, I have 4x. Hold on. I said 4x. Outer. I'm multiplying here. Outer, I have 12x. I'm trying to get 8. You know what? This is going to work. This probably is going to work. Um, it's a coincidence, I tell you. This is a bad example. Because I need negative 8. If this was negative 12 and positive 4, uh, that's going to make negative 8, isn't it? So that would make this a positive 4. If I make this a negative, that's going to make that negative 12. So that's good. Am I going to get a negative 16 out of it? Sure, a positive times a negative is a negative. 
So I actually am getting the 8 from the 4 and the 4. So now you're going to think that that's the way it works. Um, I wish this example had not appeared at this juncture. But what can I say? I did not write this assignment. I am but the humble servant of the process. Okay, let me drag this over. All right, let's do number six, y'all. Um, what have we here? Is there a GCF? No, there's not. So let's go ahead and do what we have to do. Um, 4x squared. Now we have to be careful this time. 4x squared, there are two possibilities this time. It could be um, 2 times 2 to make that 4, or it could be 1 times 4. Okay, in other words, this 4x squared could factor as 2x times 2x, okay, or it could be like 4x times x. We don't know. I'm going to start with 2x and 2x and see how it goes. But if nothing works, I will go back and try 4x and x. Um, so fine, now we look at the 15. 15 is usually uh, 3 times 5. But if that doesn't work, there's always 1 times 15. Now here again, all right, you might think, oh, it's clearly going to be the 1 and the 15 because that will make 16. Now, I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be that one. It's probably going to be the 3 and the 5. All right, last time I said that, and it turned out to work anyway. So I'm going to look like an idiot if it turns out to be 1 and 15 again. But I'm betting that it will not be the 1 and the 15 that works this time. Um, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm not going to try the 1 and the 15 first. I always start with the smaller numbers first. So I'm going to start with 3 times 5, like that, okay? Now remember, the inner plus the outer must equal the middle. So, inner, I've got 6x, I'm multiplying. Outer, I've got 10x, multiplication. I am trying to make a negative 16x out of this. Uh, and I can get negative 16 if both of these are negative. Okay, and that means both of these would be negative. Will that make a positive 15? Sure, a negative times a negative is a positive. So, bam, we factored it. So, notice it turned out to be the 3 times the 5, not the 1 and the 15. The reason why, we're not adding up these two numbers to make the middle. We're adding the inner, you know, which in this case was 6x, and the outer, which was 10. Okay, we're not just adding 3 and 5. Okay, you get it. You're smart. I believe in you, people. That's why I do this job. Okay. Magical unicorns, every single one of you. Um, so let's look at number 7. Okay, I think I will do number 7 and 8. And then I'll pause this video. Um, okay. This one is relatively easy because of the lack of a leading coefficient other than 1. So, so there are no common factors, so we will go ahead. A squared has to be A times A. B squared can really only be B times B. So I'm kind of hoping this works out. Remember that... The inner plus the outer must equal the middle. All right, inner, I have B times A, which in alphabetical order becomes AB. Outer, I have A times B, which again is AB. Okay, if I pick the signs right, can I get a positive 2AB out of this? Well, sure, if I just make them both uh, positive, all right, this is like 1AB plus 1AB. That's 2AB. Okay, so that's great. So um, that means both of these would be positive. Will that give me a positive on my B squared? Sure, positive times a positive is a positive. 
So that means we did it. Yay. We factored it. We rock. Okay, one more for this video. Then I'm going to pause the video. And put the rest on the other next video. Okay, another boring one. Whatever. Super easy, people. It's almost like cheating. N squared can only be N times N. 15. What? 15 is either going to be 3 times 5 or it's going to be 1 times 15. That's it. Let's try the 3 and the 5 because I can Let's look for the 2 because there's no leading coefficient other than 1. But technically, inner plus outer must equal the middle. Inner, I've got 3n. Outer, I've got 5n. I'm trying to get positive 2. If I have a negative 3 and a positive 5, that'll give me positive 2. So there's my negative 3, and there's my positive 5. Will that give me the negative 15 that I want? Yes, a negative times positive is a negative. So, kabam! That means this, my friends, is the answer. Okay, that's enough for one video. So, I'm going to stop this video. And uh, the rest of this assignment. Oh, you know what? Should I just finish this? All right, the rest is like matching and stuff, so I'm going to power through. This video may get slightly long, but I think I can knock this out pretty quick. All right, we're doing a matching situation. Okay. So remember, um, it's all about the inner and the outer and the middle. Okay? It's all about inner plus outer equals middle. Okay? So look, inner, including the sign, I have negative 2x right here. So inner, I have negative 2x. Outer, I have positive 12x. Positive 12x. Okay, so together, that's going to make a middle of positive 10x. Now look, let's look at the last term also. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. Okay? And of course, you know, we've done everything else. We might as well do the 3x times x, all right? Of course, that's 3x squared. So, which one is 3x squared plus 10x minus 8? Okay, uh, let's see. 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. So, number 4 is a. So we'll put an A right there. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, um, again, inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have negative 24x. I'm multiplying. Negative 24x. Okay, put these together. That gives me a middle of negative 23x. I'll put it over here, negative 23x. Now, positive 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. Okay, so that's going to be 3x squared minus 23x minus 8. 3x squared minus 23x minus 8. That means this is b. Okay, inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 2x. Outer, I have 12x. That's going to give me a middle of positive 14x. Positive 2 times positive 4 is positive 8. So that, that makes this 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. Let's take a look. 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. That means this is C. Okay, that means the last one must be D, but let's follow through and check it out. Inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have negative 1x. Outer, I have positive 24x. Put it together, and that gives me a middle of positive 23x. Negative 1 times positive 8 is negative 8. So that makes 3x squared plus
plus 23 minus 8. Oh look, 3x squared plus 23 minus 8. So we did all the matching. Okay. And uh, what's this? Same, same thing. All right, same thing again. Oh, but it's just pairs of them. Okay, it's just like A, B, A, B. Uh, okay, well, same thing. All right, inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have negative uh, 1x. Outer, I have um, 18x, positive 18x. Together, that makes a middle of positive 17x. Okay, that's 17. So that means it can't, it's supposed to be 7. So that means A is not the answer. Okay, that means the answer must be B. Okay, but let's check it anyway. Inner, negative 2x. Outer, 9x. Put it together, uh, positive 7x, just like we wanted. So yes, B was the right answer. Okay, same thing. Inner, I have negative 2x. Outer, I have negative 9x. Together, that makes negative 11x. That's not what we want, so it's not A. So the answer must be B, but let's check it out. Inner, I have negative 1x. Outer, I have 18x. Hmm, well this is not working either because that would be 17x. Did I mess up on the last one? Alright, neither one of these are working. This is both like, no, let me be able to read the directions. Choose the correct factorization. If neither is correct, find the correct fa factorization. Okay. So neither was correct. So I guess we will find the correct factorization. So the correct factorization will go like this. OK, so here comes the correct factorization. 6x squared, um, this could either be 6x times x, or it could be 2x times 3x. I don't know yet. All right, of course, this can only be 1 times 3. So uh, I'm going to start off with 2x times 3x. Now, looking at this, it's got to be like 1 times 3. Now, um, I'm not going to put the 1 here and the 3 here, because that would make a common factor. All right, if there's no common factor in the original problem, there should be no common factor in the parentheses either. So I won't waste my time putting the 3 here. Instead, I'll put the 3 here and the 1 here. Okay, inner, that gives me 9x. Outer, that gives me 2x. I'm trying to get a middle of negative 7. I can get that if I have a negative 9 and a positive 2. I would get a negative 9 if this were negative, and I would get a positive 2 if this were positive. Now, is that going to give me a negative 3? Yes, negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. So this is the correct factorization. Okay, so that's number 6. Okay, I think this is the last problem on the paper, which is good because this video is like 10 minutes too long. Try to keep it to 15 minutes these days. Okay, um, so let's check it out go micro with it. Um, inner, I have negative 1x. Outer, I have negative 20x. Okay, if you put those together, you get negative 21x. Well, ding, ding, ding. That's what we needed, right there. Okay. Um, yeah, so A is the answer. All right, negative times a negative is a positive, so that also worked. 
Okay, let's look at the other one just for fun. Um, inner, we have negative 2x. Outer, we have uh, negative 10x. Together, that would make negative 12x. So, no. So, it was A. All right, people. That was some good practice on factoring trinomials. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I will see you on the next video.